we are live. I think we're live. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always with these live streams, please let us know in the chat if you can hear me and you can see me okay. I'm joined tonight by Rob. Hi. And Arthur. Hi. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be doing a three-player game of Rebuilding Seattle. This is a new game that's coming out. I don't exactly know when it's coming out. I think it's coming out soon from WizKids. WizKids have asked me to create this video. And yeah, we're going to be teaching you how to play tonight. This is a one to five player game. So we're seeing it at the three player play count. But just so, just so you know, there is a solo mode and it does take up to five players. We've all played before. We've played it this afternoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of how the game works. And then as we start playing it, I'm going to dive a bit more into details. So this game is set after the great fire of 1889 which as you all know uh burned down most of downtown seattle uh, and we are city planners tasked with rebuilding it uh, and our population keeps expanding and they expect all kinds of luxuries so what we're doing is we're going to be playing this game over three rounds and we're trying to get as many victory points as we can get victory points are tracked on this board here with these nice little wooden stars um, and in each round it follows four phases but the general flow of the game is at the start of every round our population increases we start with 11 population. That is going to increase by another 12 at the start of round two, and then another 12 at the start of round three. So that more and more people keep arriving. And if we look at my player board here, we do get Paul's pointy piece of wood. So this is my player board. First of all, well, this is a district. There are six districts in the game. Uh, we've chosen these at random, but there is a variant where you can actually choose which one you want. And you'll notice that I have these three coloured cubes on here. Now, this represents the number of uh, shops that I've got, uh, the number of restaurants that I've got, and the amount of entertainment. And at the moment, I've got 11 people. Well, it's probably not 11 people, but 11 people living in my district, and they are wanting entertainment, they're going to want restaurants, and they're going to want shopping. And one of the things in this game that I'm trying to do is trying to move these cubes upwards to meet the requirements of the people. Now, it does say in the rule book. That you probably don't want to try and do all three because it's quite difficult you might want to focus on just one or two but on the left hand side we have the same three wooden cubes but this time these represent the quality so what we're tracking here is we're tracking the number of each one we've got and here we're tracking the quality of them so it could be that i still only have you know three restaurants but my restaurants are actually really really good or i might build lots and lots of restaurants and i might end up with nine of them but they might not be very good. Basically, we're going to be moving these cubes around as the game goes on. But when we come to scoring these three amenities, the closer your cube is to the meeple, the more stuff you're going to get. In other words, if you've got 11 people and they want 11 restaurants and you have 11 restaurants, you're going to get the full value of it. But for each one that's missing, you're going to get fewer points or fewer money or, or whichever. That's a general overview of the game. We reach building up. If we look at my starting neighborhood tile this is my starting neighborhood tile there are six of these included in the game again we've chosen these at random but this tells me that i currently have three lots of entertainment in my neighborhood three restaurants three shops i have one of these financial buildings i have two of these we're calling them train stations uh, and we have one education building uh, now quick note while we're on here even though this is size three and this is size three and this is size three there's only one icon so that's important. A lot of the things in this game trigger off the number of icons. And you'll notice that for the blue, the orange and the pink buildings, there's one icon per square. But for the yellow, green and the white buildings, it's one icon per tile. Um, so, yeah, this is my starting neighborhood. This is where I'm going to be building buildings, because if you notice from the overview, uh, you will notice there's a big pile of tiles here. This is a polyomino game. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be building buildings by placing these tiles into into our area here right so four rounds i'm going to give you a very quick summary of what happens in each of the four rounds the first phase is simple we increase our population that's the only thing that happens in phase one and we've already done that for round one of the game in that we've got 11 uh we've got 11 population the second phase of the game is the build phase now in the build phase that's the main part of the game what's going to happen is I was randomly chosen as the starting player. So I've got this very, very large starting player marker, this crane. Um, I'm going to basically take a turn. Then Arthur's going to take a turn. Rob's going to take a turn. Uh, and this is going to go... Yeah, sorry, I can't do anything about the echo. Uh, new microphone system. I was hoping there wouldn't be that much echo. But there is a little bit, unfortunately. Still trying to, still trying to tweak the audio. Um, 
So yeah, what we're going to happen is we're going to play in turns. We're going to go around the table. We're going to be taking turns and we're going to take many turns during the game. The event cards, which you can see here in the middle of the board, there are six event cards. One of the actions that we can take when it's our turn is that we can activate one of these events and that flips it over. When all these events are flipped over, that is the end of the build phase. So we're going to take lots and lots of turns during a round. But as soon as all the events are flipped over, that's when that's when it all stops. Then we do the profit phase where we basically gain money. And then we do the cleanup phase where we reset everything for the next round. OK, so that that's a very quick overview of how it works. This is probably going to be, I reckon, a 90 minute game max for three players. It is. I class this as a light to medium game. The rulebook is relatively short, um, but there are still quite a few decisions to make in the game. Now, before we started, we each get dealt three landmark cards. So you'll see here there's a bunch of landmark cards included in the game. Every player gets dealt three of them and you choose two of them. Now, I've chosen the green building and the science center. We're going to keep these off camera while we're playing the game. But at the point we build them, we're going to then put them on camera. But these landmark cards, if I just show you my board, uh, you'll notice that there is an end of game scoring condition on them. In fact, this one has an immediate ability as well. But what you want to do is you want to choose landmarks. And these are basically setting your end of game goals. Um, so we're going to go through these now just so we all know what we've got. I have the green building. This at the end of the game is going to get me two points for every lake I have on my board. So on my board here, the empty spaces, there are some, some of them have terrain icons. There's lakes, there's forests and there's hills. I'm going to get at the end of the game two points for every lake icon. I've also got the science center uh, and the science center is going to give me 10 points at the end of the game for each landmark that I have. So if I build both of my landmarks, the science center is going to be worth 20 points. Rob, do you want to just go through which ones you've got? Yeah, so I've got uh, firstly a cinema, uh, which immediately gives me two jumps on the um, entertainment. The quality credit. of your entertainment goes up by two as soon as you build the cinema. Yeah, that makes sense. End of the game, I get four for each cinema tile adjacent to at least one train tile. Right. So it is a polyonimo game and some of the scoring tiles will actually give you points based on the relative positions of things. So so yours, four points for every entertainment tile, which is next to a train station. Yeah. Right. At, okay. least, at least one train station. At least one. So that's what yeah. you're trying to do. And your um, other building is? Yeah, so the other one gives me uh, two victory points for each uh, university tile. Yeah. And at the end of the game, it's four for each university tile adjacent to at least one oh, right. entertainment tile. <laughs> you're going to be really having to be careful about where you place your tiles. Yeah, I think so. OK, Arthur, <clears throat> what have you got? I've got this amazing sports stadium, which will immediately, once built, will immediately give me uh, one improvement in quality of all three different types of amenity. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, I'll get two victory points for each level on my quality tracks. So two points per level. OK. Not counting level zero, apparently. And I've also got this amazing Space Needle. Uh, which, when built, immediately allows me to enact one of my laws, which you've not spoken about yet. Um, and at the end of the game, will give me four points per financial district tile adjacent to at least one shop. Right. Tile. Fantastic. OK, so just before we start, a couple of things to get out of the way. A big thank you to WizKids for asking me to create this video. This is a sponsored video uh, on behalf of WizKids. Uh, so thank you very much for that and for supporting the channel. Uh, but in addition to the sponsorship, I do rely on the financial support of the Patreon campaign. So if you've enjoyed this video, obviously give it a like, leave me a comment. Um, but if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And the final thing to mention, if you're watching this back live, if you're watching this live and you know how to play the game, I don't know if the designer's in the chat. The designer was going to try and be here, um, but I think he might be away at a convention. Um, if you spot anything that we do wrong, if somebody forgets to pay anything or we forget to add victory points, please let us know in the chat and we'll keep an eye on the chat. Um, but also, if you're watching this back afterwards, please turn on the Klingon subtitles because what quite often happens is two days after the video's gone out, somebody will say, oh, Paul, you forgot to score points for this. So if that happens, I will edit the video and I'll add some Klingon subtitles. So yeah, if you're watching it live, you can't turn on the Klingon subtitles, but you might be able to try it. It probably won't work. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this back afterwards, I'd recommend turning those on and we'll add any fixes in there. Right. So, start player has been randomly decided as me. I've got eight money. Arthur's got nine. Rob's got ten. If it was a four and five play game, they would have extra money. We've already done phase one, which is increasing population. So now it's phase two. Phase two is the build phase. 
I'm going to briefly explain the three different options that I've got on my turn. The first one is I can build. And when I build, I either build a building and or a suburb tile. So I could take a suburb tile just on its own, or I could take a building on its own, or I could take a suburb and a building. OK, that's my first option. My second option is I can activate one of these events. We're probably not going to do that that early, but you never know. And the third option is an enact a law. So the reason these district boards are different is there's three laws on there. And once per round, I can choose to activate, to, to enact one of these laws. And what I do is I move the marker onto it uh, and that's it. You can only do that once per round and there's only three rounds in the game. Uh, so they are the three possible actions. Build, activate an event or enact a law. Right. And I'll explain them more in detail as I do them. And the first thing I'm going to do is very probably build a building. So let's have a look at the building board. Uh, that's this button here. I've got this turned sideways. So what we've actually got is we've got the score track here. We've got the round cards here. Uh, we never replenish them. So these are the cards for round one. They won't, those won't get used. Uh, and there's actually, this is the row of buildings that you use for a one or two player game. And if you look at the big overhead, we've got an extra row because we're three players. If we were four players, we'd have another one of these. And if we were five players, we'd have another one of these. So the more players in the game, the more the buildings, the, the more buildings there are to buy. The cost to buy is shown on here. And what you do is you simply take the card. Now, the cards all have two different things on. And sometimes those two things are related and sometimes they're not. The top is which actual building tile you add into your city. So the different colours all do different things. And then the bottom of it will tell you an, an immediate thing that you get to do. This is an immediate thing. This is an end of game scoring and this is an end of profit play scoring. So as I said, the top and the bottom are sometimes connected, but not always. For example, this card here gives you a size three restaurant and increases the quality of your shopping by one. So those two things ha have no relation whatsoever. The suburb tiles are all here. They're all in a big pile. Uh, there's lots of them included in the game. I've actually got three more stacks off camera um, and they're four dollars each. And you can buy, as I say, a suburb tile and or a building tile. But I have to borrow one of them. Right. Now, I've not been thinking about what I'm doing, but I think I know what I want to do. And. Yeah, so I've only got eight money, which is not a lot. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend four money and I'm going to buy this card here. So this card, if we just have a look at it on my player board, does two things. It's first of all going to give me an L-shaped yellow building, which is a train station. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to add that into my city. And this is an immediate one-off effect. It increases the quality of my restaurants by one. So all I do is I move that up and I don't actually need to keep this card in play now. I'm going to keep this card just to one side, but because it's had an immediate effect, I can just put it to one side. So if we look at my neighborhood, this is my starting neighborhood. Uh, you can't build over other buildings. So I can basically put this somewhere around here. Now, I'm not worried because of my cards where this goes. And I don't want to cover up any of these symbols. These symbols are all going to score for me um, at various times in the game. So I'm just going to put this here. You can't overlap it. You can't have it at a wonky angle. But the reason why you, go, you want to buy suburb tiles is that you're going to need to expand this uh, to give you more space to build it. So, yeah, I'm just going to put that there. And that's my turn done. Arthur. I'm going to spend three money and I'm going to purchase this thing. OK, so that gives you a T-shaped financial building. Districts. I'm just going to go exactly there. Right. Now that card, if we just have a look at that on my screen. So the card that Arthur's just bought, if you look at this, has an each profit phase ability. So what's going to happen is Arthur's going to keep this card in his area and every profit phase, which is the third phase of each round, he's basically going to get one dollar for each restaurant tile. And it says not symbol, just one for each restaurant tile. So there you go, that's yours. And notice these cards are not refreshing. They, ne they never do, except at the end of the round. Okay, um, Rob, you done? Yeah. are you buying as well? Or yeah, something I'm going to buy different? something. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. There's other things you can do, but this seems like a good one for me. So this one um, gets you a size three university. Size for university and also in the profit phase, I will generate money for each entertainment time. Okay, so yeah, similar to the one Arthur's taking. 
I'm going to put it here, which is covers up, unfortunately covers up some things. Okay. Remember, you could have bought a suburb tile at the same time. And if you do buy a suburb tile at the same time, you can put the new building onto the new suburb tile. That's that's up to you. All done? Yeah. I'm right. Done. I'm going to do something different. So as I say, building is one of the actions that you can do. And when you build, you can either build a building card, a pre-printed building that we'll mention in a minute, or your landmark. Landmarks are really expensive. One of the other things that you can do in the game is to activate an event. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So these are the six different events. It's always these six events during the game. And when you activate it, uh, I think the rules say that you take it and you remove it. We're just going to leave them here and we're going to flip them over. Uh, and then you basically follow the instructions on it. So I'm going to activate this event. This is the expansion event. And first of all, it says that you may buy a suburb tile for one dollar. And then all players will gain a suburb tile for every train station they've got. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend one dollar to buy a suburb tile. But then because I have three train stations, I get the top three. This is the exact opposite strategy to what I used in the game this afternoon. Uh, Arthur, you get one tile, and Rob, you get one tile as well. So I'm just going to place this. So these, these can be placed anywhere in my area as long as they are orthogonally touching one side. So I can I can put it there, or I can put it here, or I could put it here. As long as there's a touching bit, then that's okay. Um, I'm not going to think about this too much. And it's less important for me because my scoring tiles are nothing to do with positioning. So I basically just need lots of space and I don't want to cover up the water symbols. So I probably want to put, and you can flip these over however you want to. I probably want to put the water symbols as far out. Yeah. Or I could just put that there. I want to make big clumps of empty space for me to put stuff in and leave as much other stuff available as I can. I might put that, might put that there actually. Yeah, okay, we're going to do that. Um, and that's the event done. And then you flip that over. And remember, as soon as all of these six events have been flipped, that's when the round ends and it ends immediately. Right, Arthur. Do you know what? I was going to do that. Were you? <laughs> Interesting. That was the strategy I used last game. Yeah. Didn't work, out, didn't work out too well in the end. Um, Okay, I am going to spend four dollars, mm -hmm. and I'm going to buy this one. Okay, so immediately because you're going down that route, green. yeah. And the quality of your restaurants goes up by one. It does. And actually, oh yeah, they're green. Yeah, green ones yeah. don't move the cubes. Okay, that that card can go. We don't need that one. Well, yeah, it's yeah, I think just pop it to one side. Rob? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to build as well. Okay. So, tempting as that would give me four money, wouldn't it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, it would give you five. Five? Well, you choose three money, I and then it would be trees, one dollar yeah. for each tree. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay. So before you do, I'm just going to show that on the main overhead. So Rob is going to activate this event here, activate nature's impact event. So the first thing it is the player who activates it gains $3. And then in round one, all players will gain $1 for each tree symbol that they have on their board. So Rob, if you want to do yours, I'll show everybody my player board. This has actually worked out for me really well because I've just gained all of these suburb tiles. <laughs> so for me, I gain one, two, three, four, five, six. So I get $6. Should have done it for that before you did that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob, you get three plus the two. Yeah. So you get five. Arthur, you get three. It's just three. three. Just three, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was your go. Yeah. You've activated that event. Right. Okay. So back to me. Now, what you've not seen yet is you've not seen us moving any of these cubes up because. The buildings that we've bought haven't done any of that. But I think it might be time. Now that I've got a bit of money, I think it might be time to start building some actual things. Oh, it's interesting the way things have come out. Yeah, it's very painful. It is. <laughs> so I'm going to spend $4 and I'm going to buy this card here. 
OK, so something slightly different is going to happen here. First of all, I get to build a size two restaurant. So I'm going to be putting that on my board. But what this here is, is this is a reminder that every time I add uh, to add a restaurant into my uh, neighborhood, I move my cube up. So remember, these cubes here represent how many of each type of amenity I've got. I've just built two more restaurants, so I'm going to move that cube up to there. I now have five restaurants. I have 11 people who want to eat and I've only got five restaurants for them. So I'm still six short, but it's better than before where I was seven short. And then the bottom of the card is quality of my restaurants goes up by one. So my restaurants are actually pretty good quality now. And then I need to add this size two restaurant into my neighborhood. Uh, and again, I'm not worried about any positioning or anything like that. So I'm just going to put it there. As I said, you can cover up these icons if you want to. But as we've seen, those icons are useful for when the nature's event happens. Right, Arthur, it's your go. Uh, and I'm just going to open the door, which might reduce the echo. Mm. Or we might not. Ooh. Let me know if that's made any difference to the, uh, to the echo. I was pondering buying some transportation, but it's hideously expensive. Yes, one person per restaurant. Seattle is very strict about the rules. <laughs> so instead I'll spend three on an okay. educational establishment. Yeah, you've got a size three school or university. And that increases the quality of my shopping, apparently. Right, shops. Okay. Oh, and uh, increases... Oh, it's not tractor. Right. right. Apparently the sound has got a lot better. Excellent. There we go. So just just opening that door has made a big difference. Rob. All right. Um, I'm going to build again. So I'll spend four. Spend four. I build this. Um, so this gives me uh, one increase on the entertainment track, and I yep. get a uh, uh, you can, you can green bank there. thing. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, quality of your entertainment has gone up and right me well i've got five money now one thing we haven't seen yet is we nobody's enact nobody's enacted a law yet um and i'm tempted to do that but i've got five money i should probably grab the thing that i want to grab first and there is something that i want to grab i'm going to go hmm yeah i'm going to spend four dollars I'm going to grab this one. So it's a L-shaped restaurant. I get three more restaurants. The quality of my shopping goes up by one. And I'm going to put this there. So you don't have to join these things together. You can leave empty gaps between them. Arthur. Um, Did I do the thing that you were going to do again? No, 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 exactly not. <laughs> not this time, but I just don't have great, I don't have great options. I think I'm going to activate. Okay, so hang on. Let me just have a look at that one. So this is the graduation event. So this is another key part of the game. And if you're ever teaching this game to people, which is what we're doing now, this is one concept that you're going to find a little bit unusual. Because in this game, you want to lose population, which seems a little bit odd, but that's the way that it works. Because... You're going to get penalised if you don't have enough of the three amenities for the population. So one of the ways of fixing that is to build more stuff. And the other way is to reduce your population down. And this event will reduce the population for everybody. And it's what the education system is for. So, Arthur, would you like to lose one population or gain three dollars? I am going to gain three dollars. OK, and then all players lose one population per university icon. So you've got quite a few, haven't you? I've got two on the other. You've got two, so you lose two population. Rob? Same. You've got two. I've only got one, so my population goes down by one. And as I say, that's not a bad thing, because remember, when we come to the scoring and everything that you haven't seen yet, it's based on how far your cubes are behind your, your meeple icon. So now, for example, if we look at my board, I have eight restaurants and ten people. So I'm, I'm only two short, which is actually really good. Whereas the other two types, I'm now seven short, whereas before I was eight short. 
So yeah, so that's how that works. And that's it. That's yeah. that event done. Indeed. So three events already down. Rob. Okay. Um, I'm going to build something again. Um, I'll spend four money. I oh, know three money mm -hmm. to build this. Uh, so this is generic one. Ah, we have a pre-printed one. Right. Let's just show that. So you may have noticed here. That isn't a car. That is a pre-printed building. So what's actually happened is when the card has uh, been built, what it's revealed is a pre-printed building. And that is another option that you can do. So when you build, there's, a, there's actually three different things you can build. You can either build the card, you can build a pre-printed building, or you can build your landmark. Now, this isn't quite as good as one of the cards because there isn't any bottom part. But at the moment, that's what Rob wants. My apologies. Or is it he changed his mind? I've changed his mind. I, I, I've got a, a law I can enact. Ah, right. Rob's going to enact a law instead. And uh, so instead of uh, building this way, I can I can buy a building card for two. Or a pre printed building for two yeah. dollars. Okay. Um, I can also buy a suburb. For suburb. Four. Yeah. So that only cost me two, so I get a, one less than I paid before. And, uh, but instead of doing that, you're going to do, do. I can do. You're going to do one of these, ones, which is better than this. Yes. So. Going to do okay, so that's that's how building a pre-printed building works. Even though Rob's not going yeah, to do sorry that. Sorry about that. All <laughs> right. Uh, so I got three on on here. Three shops. So Rob's blue cube moves moves up three spaces. Yeah. Um, I have to find somewhere to put this. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah. Given all of that play, you probably right. should be here. Okay. Excellent. Right. Um, so we haven't. You haven't. You haven't enacted the law. Yeah. And that is it. That's Rob's enacting his law done for this round. You can only do one law. I'm considering doing mine. I think I'm going to do it. I am, I'm going to enact my law as well. So the law that I'm going to enact, again, these are all unique depending on which district you're playing. So I'm going to enact the National Park Law. So I basically gain $1 for every one of those icons in my neighbourhood. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I gain $6. Yeah, Arthur, you're good. Well, local government is definitely working full time. So I'm going to enact a law to create a business fund. You've started a trend, Rob. <laughs> Increase any one quality track, which will be nice. Ah, so you can't reconcile that. Well, not with the waterfront. No, I, I thought I'd worked out the previous time I played that you could always reconcile the positions of the cube, the cubes. But because this lets with me... With that, you can't. Yeah, with yeah. that, I can't. Yeah. Just have to remember how many times you used it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, done. Okay, Rob. All right. Um... So now I'm going to spend five monies. So I probably should have done this in a different order. Um, because it's about this. So I've lost, I've basically wasted two money. It's a big one. By doing it in the wrong order, but yeah. Um, so you've got four more four entertainment more. buildings, which is way more than you need yeah. <laughs> for now. And yeah, that's a thing that generates me profit as well. Okay. For these. Okay, nice. So I've got some money again now. I've already done my law. Um, do I want to do an event? Actually, I'm not sure I do. Hmm. Things are a little bit low down here. I'm considering... What's that one? End of the game. Two points for every... Oh, for every one of those. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend three dollars. Three dollars. I'm going to buy that card. So it's a small bank, and it's an end game scoring tile. So yeah, two points for each bank that I've got. Uh, kind of don't want to cover up any of my symbols <laughs> at the moment, so I'm going to put it there. Well, Arthur, apparently it is a Universal Shopping Day. Next We're going to do it right. Okay, so this is a big part of the game. For those of you that haven't switched off yet, you're now going to see the core me mechanism of the game and how it works and that is these three events so there is one for entertainment there's one for shopping and there's one for restaurants so arthur is activating this one so the first thing is arthur has a choice of either gaining a small shopping tile which is a little one by one tile which will increase the number of shops that he has in his district by one or gaining three points which one of those do you want to do you're increasing the number of shops okay so you've built a little shop 
Right. The next thing that happens is all players are actually going to score their shopping quality track. So let's have a look at my board and I'll explain how this works. I have already mentioned that these three markers here represent the quality of the amenity. So if we look at my shops, my shops have a quality of one, which means they are worth either eight dollars or eight points. I can choose whether to take eight dollars or eight points, but that's only if I've got enough of them. I have 10 people. I only have three shops, so I'm actually seven short. Now, what that means is I reduce this by seven. So instead of getting eight dollars or eight points, I would have got that if I'd have had at least as many shops as people or more. But as it is, I'm seven short. So I can take either one dollar or one point. And at this stage in the game, I'm going to take one point. Right now, Arthur, you're in a different situation. So talk us through it. So to clarify, you said one point, but you took one dollar. Did I? Yes. OK, sorry. <laughs> I meant one dollar. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant. But yes. I just in case you hadn't done what you intended. Um, yeah, so I've got a population of 11. Nine. Or even nine, better. Um, I've got seven shots. So you're so two short. Two short uh, and I'm on quality level two. So I can basically get uh, nine money or nine points. Yes. And nine points is a consideration. Nine points is a lot. The winning score in the last game that we played was almost 150. Wasn't it? We yeah, were, yeah, we were yeah, kind yeah, of twice yeah, round yeah, and then yeah. we were about here. But yeah. nine points is quite a lot. Not nine money is quite a lot as well. So, But I'll take the nine points, I think. Taking the nine points. Mm. Boom. Now, Rob. Rob has got nine people. He's only got three shops. So you're at minus six. And the quality of your shops is still zero. So Rob doesn't get anything for that. And that is the first of those three events done. Okay, I'm going to do that same thing, but for, for entertainment. entertainment. So, would you like a little one by one dance floor, yes, or please. would you like you want that one? Yeah, that gives you one more entertainment building. Yeah. Okay. Now, entertainment building. We've just seen shops, so shops get you either money or points. You choose. Entertainment buildings get you money and points, and restaurants just get you points. So, Rob, you've got nine people. 11 shops yeah sorry 11 entertainment buildings yeah so you get the full value of that which is what six six dollars and six, six points yeah so there's no bonus for getting beyond nope no no as long as you've got enough yeah uh so you want to take six dollars yeah i do okay uh i'm not going to get anything for this and i'll just i'll just go into my board we do need to clarify this because this is the bit that's the trickiest to explain my entertainment buildings are four dollars and four points however I only have three of them and I need 10 of them. So I'm seven short. So these numbers minus seven means zero. So I don't get anything for my entertainment buildings. But at least you're not penalised. I'm not penalised, yeah. Similarly, I get nothing. I think I think it does say in the rules it's reduced to a minimum of zero. Um, I, I think it does. Otherwise, we'll be adding Klingon subtitles in there. But no, I'm pretty sure that's, that's how it works. Um, if you have fewer symbols, gain one less of each resource for each missing symbol. You can't earn negative rewards. Yes. And the most you can get is the least you can get is zero. Uh, so that was good timing for Rob on that one. You're done. So it's my go. Now, if I activate this event, that's it. The round is over. Um, now, is there any way that I can increase my stuff before activating that event? Well, there is. There actually is. But I'm not going to. I'm actually going to spend all of my money and I'm going to buy this because I've just noticed not only does it give me a little train station, at the end of the game it's going to give me two points for each train station. So that seems quite nice. And let's put that here. Okay, Arthur. I am going to buy one of these hideously expensive suburbs right for four yeah so you just buy a suburb and attach it to your neighborhood so that's it then is it um, that's arthur's go yeah your go i'm going to spend seven money to buy this and the suburb okay so remember when you do the build action you can buy a building and or a suburb 
Arthur just bought a suburb. Rob is buying a suburb and a building. And that building can go straight on the suburb if you want it to. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's only two. Well, that's good. The little ones. The little ones are Isn't better. It? The little ones are better. Kind of, but I need to join them to the blue one. Oh, right. Okay. Like, <laughs> for, your, for your scoring thing. Yeah. Worth a point here. Oh, Daniel's in the chat. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for popping in. Daniel, the uh, graphic designer uh, of a lot of games. And he's also a games designer in his own right. Um, but yeah, graphic design on this game. Great. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. It's very clear. Paul Snug says your mics are nicely balanced. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's because the counterweight on the end. <laughs> right, back to me. Great to. Yeah. So again, we're in the situation where if I activate that event, that's going to end the round. I have no money and I have already done my law and you must take an action on your turn. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, do I want another little one by one restaurant? Or do I want three points? Now, didn't we work out in round one? It's the same. Because it's going to get me one extra point now. So over the three rounds, it will get me three extra points. So if you've got the space for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't get any bonus points for having restaurants. So I'm actually just going to take the three points. I'm going to take the three points. Uh, and then all players score their quality track. So here we go. I'm going to have a look at mine because this is, this is where I excel. So I've got eight... Eight restaurants. I need ten, so I'm too short. My restaurants are quality two, which means they're worth 14 points. So instead of getting 14 points, I get 12 because I'm too short. I will be very happy with 12 points. Arthur? Um, I think I'm one, two, three, four, five, six short. Six short. So, I get so instead of ten, you get four. four. Two, three, four. Rob? Instead of six, I get zero. Zero. <laughs> Rubbish quality restaurants and not yeah. enough of them. Right, okay, but that's it. That That is the end of the build phase. So we've got two more phases to do. Phase three is the profit phase. Now, in the profit phase, two things happen. First of all, all players get $5 for each of these green buildings, which we're calling banks or financial buildings, whatever. So $5 for each of those. And then what happens is if anybody has any cards in play with profit phase abilities, those profit phase abilities would happen now. I have knob. So I simply just get $10, but you two have got profit phase abilities, haven't you? Yeah, I get uh, $1 per uh, restaurant. Which per restaurant know. tile. Tile, yeah. So, so you get an extra one. dollar. Mm. And Rob? I've got two of these, and so that's two per entertainment tile. And you've got four entertainment four tiles. Star, so that's eight. $8 extra. Plus this, which is 10. God, that's um, right. I like 10 games. So, that's the so you got to 10 extra dollars income on top of your 15. He did this in the last game. He got loads of money. <laughs> Not necessarily the best strategy. No, 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 no. Right, that's the profit phase done. Now we do the cleanup. So you don't do the cleanup in the last round of the game, but if it isn't the last round of the game, you remove all of the remaining cards from that round, and you can just put them back on top of the deck because we don't need them. We're going to set the game up for the next round. Um, law tokens get reset, and the events get flipped over. Now, the start player, who triggered the end of the game? So the start player goes yeah, to the next place. Traditional, traditional place. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look at what cards we've got for round two. Remember, there's only three rounds of the game, so this game does quite go along at quite a nice pace. There's nothing we've forgotten, is there? Yes. We need to update the round track. And we get a load of people. That will be phase one of the next round. Okay. Yeah. So here's all of the cards. So as you can see, very similar to what we saw before. Nothing new in these cards, just slightly different mix. There you go. Right, round two. So the first thing that happens in round two is we gain 12 new people. Now your people can never go be above 30. But remember, you want to keep the population low. So if you just have a look at my board now, it was going OK. Now it's not. I've got 22 people now living in my district and I've only got three shops, three places for them to be entertained and eight restaurants. So I'm going to have to reduce this population a lot or build a lot more stuff. Arthur, 
We're up. Build phase. Oh, yes. And I've only got 10 money. <laughs> I need to get a loan. Yes. Right, so... 10 money is nowhere near it, I think, with a plan. Everything's so expensive, but I do have a plan. I can't quite pick out that one on the end. This there. one? No, this one. This one. Uh, one dollar for each um, entertainment tile that you have. Which I've got loads. In the profit <laughs> phase. Yeah, that's not so good. Um, oh, ah, I could do that. And avoid being consumed like I was last time. Yes, I will do this one. You're going to do it. Right, okay. So do you want to buy a suburb tile for one dollar? Yes, I do. So you get a free one and one more. Rob, you get one. One dollar. Nope. For free. Just free. And I get four. Two, three, four. Excellent. Now that's gonna that's gonna help. It's gonna help a lot. And again, I'm I'm building to the right here. There's no reason why I can't build to the left. Build wherever you want to build. We can flip these. And you can flip them, rotate them, put them in half with a pair of scissors, stick them back together. You can't do that last bit. Um, right, if you flip it, I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, <laughs> I think it's exactly the same. No, I just I just flipped it on one. So I think it was like that. I can't remember. Now. <laughs> one and two makes. No, it doesn't make any difference. You're right. That's so that was an irrelevant question. Let's try to go for the biggest area as possible. I don't want to cover up any of these icons. Right. Okay. So that was Arthur, and that was Arthur's first event. Yeah. Oh, this was here, wasn't it? Sorry. I'm just getting slightly confused here about because I, I messed up and flipped the wrong thing. Oh, right, I guess okay. I how it was. But... Your action, Rob. Yep. Um, so I'm going to buy this thing. Um, yep. Three monies. So you get two places of entertainment. Yep. Um, which is the reason why I put that there. Right. Because um, it might be useful later. Okay. And so the quality of your entertainment goes up by one. Quality goes up by one. Yeah, okay. So I know this is going to be activated at some point, and I, I only have one university, so my population is only going to drop by one. But the, the nature's impact event this turn is reducing your population based on the number of lakes, and I have lots of lakes. So I'm going to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So although I'm on 22, it's actually going to go down to 13. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, I was going to build another train station because they're worth points to me at the end of the game but I wanted to do that before you did that or before somebody did that um, so I'm looking for a restaurant which also improves the quality of my restaurants I'll spend five money and I'll buy this so I get one, two, three more restaurants the quality of them goes up and this is going to go here. Done. I shall spend five money. And I'm going to buy that green one. This one? No, next to it. This one? Yeah. Giving me a old shaped bank. Or yeah. There. And increase in my shopping quality or shops. Ah, right, so it was uh, Jeremy that did the cover illustrations. Yeah, let's just get the box out while we're, while we're here. The box cover is really nice. Uh, and some of these illustrations carried over to background images on the board and everything else. So, yeah, yeah nice front cover. Rob. Hmm. <laughs> uh, 
I think I'll leave that one here. So I'm going to make another university here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pay four for this one. Yep. So it, uh, it's got a two by two university. Yeah. And the quality of your entertainment goes up by one. Yep. Unfortunately, I have to put it over one of the squares, which is just about to. Right. Which is... Unless you bought a suburb at the same time. Yeah, maybe I should do that. She could do. Um, but that goes against my other plan. <laughs> so, plans, yeah. schmans. Yeah. So, looking at these that's available, I'm thinking I'm gonna. I've only got five dollars left. I'm gonna spend three. And I'm gonna buy this one. So it's a little university. Of course you are. <laughs> the slot in there uh, and it, eyes on that it gives me a profit phase ability for restaurant tiles of which i've got four so it seemed like a good move to me yes nobody's wearing a high-vis jacket <laughs> true or a hard hat we could have all come in fancy dresses bob the builder could have done yeah mm. what an architect yeah <laughs> so i guess I just had to pay a bit more money. I can buy this one for four. This one? No. Oh, one. this one? Yeah. Okay. So you get a, one of those. I was going to university. And you have another profit phase ability. Yeah. So in the game that we played this afternoon, which was our practice game, I ended up with seven universities. So every time this event happened, seven of my people left. And that made it a lot easier for me to meet the needs of the remaining people. And, and it did win, but I only won by three points, I think. It was a very close game. Yeah. Um, right, I'm going to... Is it my turn? Is it your go? I'm going to build one of my in-game scoring cards. Oh, we're building a landmark. Yes. Right, so the way that you build a landmark is exactly the same as you would normally build a building. It comes with a unique tile, which you take at the start of the game, uh, but it follows all of the normal building rules. So if I just... I'm going to show you just on my screen. Here we go. So this is what Rob's building. The cost is in the top left. The shape of the tile is printed here. This is an immediate effect. And then down at the bottom is the end of game effect. So you're spending $15. You're building a very large cinema. Yep. Which just about fits. Which just about fits. <laughs> and you immediately increase the quality of your entertainment by two. So there's a rule that I haven't mentioned. And in fact, it didn't actually apply in our last game whatsoever. But each of these amenities, each of these quality tracks had maxes out at five. If you ever gain an increase when it's already at five, you get five points instead. So the marker stays where it is. The reason why I'm mentioning that now is we're not even halfway through the game and Rob's got his entertainment quality to the max. So, um, yeah, if you want a good time, go to Rob's house. <laughs> now, that came out wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there you go. We got our first landmark built. It's also it's interesting because I thought a lot of the landmark would be built like at the end of the game. Mm. Well, they give a, a well, bonus when you play it. That one for running. you. Yeah. You want that as early as possible yeah. because that's going to pay dividends. Isn't it? That's an extra seven. Right, my go. I've got two dollars. I won't be building anything, so my choices are enact a law or do one of these things. I think I'm going to activate this event. So this event gives me three dollars and in round two all players lose one population per lake i don't quite know I, if, the, if the designer was in the chat i think he's busy but i'd like to know the thematic reason why we're losing people because of the lakes there might not be a thematic reason but i just I find it quite funny so yeah so i'm going to get three dollars they've all become sailors Left possibly <laughs> and now everybody loses one population for each lake so i've got one two do we also get one money Nope. Which tree? No, nope. that was only in round one. All oh, right. Okay. Because you will in round three. In round three. Yeah. Okay. Was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? So I'm now down to thirteen population. Got rid of them all. Nice. <laughs> Pushed them in the lake. Your population dropped from. Right? No, didn't. Oh, you know five. lakes. No. Well, I went down five. Right. Okay. Done. Event done. Okay. Um, I'm just building over everything. 
Hang on. Industrialization. Oh, this one. We're activating this one. Would yeah. you like to lose a population or get three dollars? Oh, we'll and then we all lose one population per university building. Which one I've got three. Two. Four. So my population is down to ten. Wow. Okay. Half is done. Three events down. We are now technically halfway through the game. Uh, it's not a long game. I'm running out of building space and I can't afford any more suburbs at the moment. So I'm, Do you have a law that will get you money? I'm going to use rapid industrialization, which doesn't get me money, but allows me to build on the cheap. So I'm going to build this for uh, two money. For two instead of four. Yep. Okay. Um, so we need two train. Um, you go. Which I'll put here. Oh, the designer based the population mechanism on the historical waves of migration in and out of Seattle at the turn of the century. There we go. Cool. I'm glad that there's a nice thematic connection to that. There's nowhere else where I can put it. Is there? Nope. Right. You've got lots of little ones. This is probably the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but you do have a very nice cinema. Bad city manifest. Yeah. <laughs> Right, all done? Yeah. Um, I should have been thinking about my turn, shouldn't I? I just got excited by losing all of those people. Um, so I'm tempted to do that one now, and that one's not going to get any better for me. But the problem is, I kind of want these two to get better before somebody else does one. So maybe... What have we got that increases quality? Mm. Hmm. Okay. I think I might stick with the plan. I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to build a giant. Oh, it's not. This This is not a train station. This is an airport. Got the planes on it. Ah. So I'm going to put an airport down here. Transportation hub. Yeah. Still got a train icon on, and the quality of my restaurants increases by one. It's a ship. Yeah, it's a harbour. Yeah. So the yellow buildings with the train icon are basically transportation. That's what they are. Right, Arthur. Yes, you once again show me the building <laughs> Bye -bye. that I wanted. And is alas there no more. Um I should start working out where these are gonna go. Although I am going to get some more suburb tiles before the end, so. Well, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of banks. Got a lot of banks. But I don't think you get any rewards no. on the um, cards for banks. What's about? A modest number of educational establishments. No, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to enact a law. Which one? Business fund. Okay, so you increase one of your quality tracks. It's interesting, we've all got up different tracks. So you've got your entertainment mm. up, I've got my restaurant up, you've got your shopping up. Right, over to you, Rob. Come on. I've got no money, I've used my law. And so you're going to do an that. event? Yeah. Okay. Is... Would you like a small little entertainment tile, or would yeah. you like three points? I will take the small entertainment tile, please. There you go. Um, so I do this would be next to a train station, but it's, there isn't that is impossible. Yeah. Um, well, it is for the moment, but you might be able to build a train station later. Yeah. So I, ideally, I should put it somewhere where it might. Earthquake. Uh, did they get an earthquake in Seattle? We do now. It might be. It's been too far north. Okay. Uh, so that increases your blue cube by one. Yeah. And then all players will score for their quality. So, Rob, you are three short three on the short. entertainment. So you get 15 money and 15 points. Okay, I'm eight short, so I get zero. 
And Arthur? I'm woefully short. You're eight short and you get zero. Yep, yeah, yeah, good play there, Rob. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you want to score on these? I'm, I'm going to score on those. But yeah, the blue one is the more powerful one, I think, because it gets you the money on the points, but it's it's not as many points. Um. So I, I can't do anything... Right, I need to do my law before activating an event. You've got to be very careful in this. If you activate the last the, the event, that ends the round or ends the phase. And you don't want to do it before you've activated law. So I'm going to activate National Park and I get... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten money. Right, I'm rich again. Arthur? I think I'm going to buy another building. And we're going to buy a cheap one. Cost three. Pre-printed one or not pre-printed one? Uh, not pre-printed. A proper building. Okay, so that gives you two more shops. Yeah. Just before we score the shops. Yeah, well, that was part of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I had to say. Um, oh, interesting. Daniel's giving us facts about the cinema. Cinema tile. Yeah. So it's uh, apparently it was the world's first movie palaces constructed in 1914 to 1916. It's now built. It's now a banana republic store. <laughs> oh right. Okay. In the UK or no 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 yeah no, no in Seattle. Oh of course yeah. Sub it being Seattle. Yeah right. That's the game we're playing. Rebuilding <laughs> rebuilding Scunthorpe is the expansion set. So yeah, yeah. Next year from yeah. Grogan Games. This is London. Yeah. Rebuilding Columpton. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I said that. So where are we up to? Uh, I think Rob's going to it. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to spend money. Well, the going is apparently not that good. Uh, so I'm going to spend seven uh, to buy this. I oh, know that's, yeah, that could be five points, right? Will it give me five points and five money or just five points? How did you spend seven? From my... Yeah, but it's only cost four. Uh, but I'm going to buy... Sorry, it needs to be eight, doesn't it? Are oh, you buying a suburb as well? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Take the suburb, put the suburb on. Yeah, and this, that's the... Uh, that's what you get. T-shaped one. Yep. And trying to figure out well, now. you wanted to connect that, didn't you, to a train station? Oh, yeah, you're right. Thanks. <laughs> That as well, but I can't join those two at the same time. Or it could be that even. Oh, you've got lots, lots of options. Yeah, too many. There we go. But that also increases your entertainment quality by one. And as we mentioned earlier, yeah, Rob's entertainment quality is already the top, so you gain five points. Yeah. Right, back to me. So I have the money now. Um, that's all right, but it's mm, that's actually going to get me because we've not scored the shopping yet. One, two, three, four. That means I'm only four short. That will get me something. And that's probably the best move. I'm going to spend five dollars. I'm going to buy this. So it's four shops, which moves my pink cube to seven. Uh, I'm going to put it there. And then I've got a profit phase ability. Arthur, you'll go. Yes. Um, some advantage to me building blue. And we've got some other pre-printed buildings here as well. I'm going to spend three on this thing. Okay. So you get four entertainments. And... I'm going to have to obliterate um, some useful stuff. So what's, some terrain. what's next? Round? So in round three, mountains will score, or hills will score one point, and trees will score one dollar. So you do not need water anymore, unless you're me, who has a card for scoring water. Okay. I am seriously going to struggle with money in the last round, I think, because I need 26 for these. That's true. I'm not going to be building much next round. I don't think. It's Rob. Yeah, I'm going to... I can't quite afford that. Although I'm going to get some money now. Let's 
nothing useful left to build. Done. Hmm. Problem is, oh well, I, can, I suppose I can make some of my stuff score when I finally play my endgame scoring card, so. Oops. Give me some extra money. Anyway, so I play, play eight. Play eight? To buy this and another. Another suburb? suburb. Yep. So the suburb tiles, there's a huge amount of them in the game. They are all four by two. They all have one of we one of each symbol on, but sort of randomly distributed. You can only ever buy the suburb tile that's on top. Off camera, I have three very large stacks still. And whenever the stack on the board runs out, we just replenish it with a with another big stack. Yeah. So. Uh... Three trains. What's it you need? Uh, a three by one train? Yeah. Yep. Uh, put it there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to buy this pre-printed building here. So I'm going to spend three dollars, and all I do is I just get, I just get that building. I don't actually get a card. So three dollars to buy that, which gives me four shops. I now have eleven shops, and I'm going to put it there to make one. Big shop. Okay, done. Shopping. Hey, would you like a one by one shop or three points? Oh, one by one shop, I think. Okay, and then all players score their quality track. So, Arthur, you so have 12 people, 10 shops, so you're only two, two short, shops. and you're on level four, so you either get $18 or 18 points. <laughs> 18 points is huge. 18 points is huge. On the other hand, I need a load of money next round, so I'll take the 18 dollars. Taking the 18 dollars. Rob? I don't score anything. 17 people and only three shops. I'm all right. I've got 11 people and 11 shops. So I get this. Unfortunately, the quality of my shops is it's not poor. very good. <laughs> so it's 8 dollars or 8 points. And because I am short on money, I'm going to take the 8 dollars. And I'm about to get a bucket load of points for that. So is Banana Republic considered a quality shop? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rob? Uh, oh. No money, no laws. You're going to have to trigger it. I have to. Would yeah. you like a, a little restaurant? Yeah, I think Hot so. dog stand? Or, or three points. Or three or points. Two money. Next turn. I think I'll take three points. You're taking the three points. You're not taking the little one by one tile. Well, well that yeah. one by one tile will generate two money and that's it. Okay. I think. So three yeah. points is better. So you're all white, aren't you? Yeah. So three points. And then you score nothing because you haven't got enough. I score 23 points. Yeah, I'm just going to zoom in on this so I sort of show people. But yeah, quality of my restaurants are 23 points and I have the right number of restaurants for my people. So as long as you've got at least that many, 23 points. Nice. Arthur. What are we doing? Restaurants. Restaurants. Your uh, I think nine I shorts. Get one. Uh, yeah, one point. Yeah. Red? Yeah. Right, that's it. We now do profit phase. This is where it's going to come a bit unstuck. So I've got 10. So this is my banks. Five, five for each bank. And then I've got two for each restaurant tile. So two, four, six, eight. And one for each shopping tile. So eight, nine, 10, 11. So I get another 11. That's not enough. It's nowhere near enough. So I get 15 from my banks. 15 from your banks. And I've got three, uh, one dollar per entertainment. And I've got six entertainments, so that's 18. Another 18 from your entertainments. Um, two from the one okay. um, restaurant tile I've got. Right. Robert? No, okay. So I get eight. I'll take 18 points for my shops. No, no we're not doing that. We're just, we're just doing profit first. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I'm going to quite just study because that doesn't do it automatically. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, right. Uh, per One pound per shop. Um, per tile. tile. Two, three, five. So, five. 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 Have you already taken your five per bank? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
and I get two plus one, so that's three dollar per entertainment tile, of which I've got two, two, so six. six, and then you get one point for each, sorry, one dollar for each restaurant tile, of which you've got one. Okay, so that's the profit phase. Right, clean up, and that's it, we're going into the last round. Let's get rid of the cards. Do me the honours and put them back on round two, please. Sure. Uh, laws get reset. And we update the round track and we add 12 people. No. Why do these people keep coming to this year? Don't they know there's no work here? Right. <laughs> so the cards for the final round of the game. Who ended the... Um... Well, that's a good point, actually. Who did end it? It wasn't me. It was me. I was forced was to take that. So I am the start player for round three. Okay. So I just need a moment to think about what's going on. Because I do have enough money to build these. I am, I am going to get money from this, and I am going to get money from that. So actually, I do have more money than I think I do. I think I'm going to give up on the entertainment industry. I think it's a bit too late for me to start that. Um, but I need space to build these, which means I kind of want that. Now then, we've got some nice juicy end game scoring tiles there, including one for restaurants. Uh, sorry, one for trains, and I've got five trains. So that's quite good. And also that one's quite good. Mm, yeah. So I'm going to spend $3. I'm going to buy this one. So that gets me three restaurants. And an end of game scoring card. <clears throat> Where am I going to put it? Right, Arthur. I'm going to activate the expansion event. <laughs> Daniel's telling me not to give up on the entertainment industry too soon. Ah, rubbish. I'll spend my one dollar. I get two, I believe. Oh, you do this? Yeah. All right, okay. So, yeah, you get two suburb sort of tiles. Rob, you get one, two, three, four. And I get five. Do we need another stack? We need uh, another stack. Well, we could just take them. There you go. Three, four, five. Three, four. We don't have no opportunities to get any more, is that right? Or uh, just buying them for $4. Oh, yeah, sorry. Usual hideously expensive way. <laughs> right. Okay, so I need to create an area. I think I'm all right for space. Just, just <laughs> don't want to. So, just planning. Um, That's not actually going there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to be clever so that I can actually. Not lose anything. I have to go there. There are all sorts of options. Yeah, there we go. We'll leave this bit. Nobody talked about this bit. Right. I think that might be my turn. That was your turn. Yeah. So drops go. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to build um, this thing, but I'm going to spend two on it. You're going to enact your yep. rapid industrialization law yep. to get three entertainment places. And one and, jump on and the track. So five points. Five points. Cool. It's interesting. We didn't do that at all in the last game. You've done it. You've done it twice in this game. Yeah. So, building that I wanted is still there. I spent three dollars. I buy this. I get another little train station. And the quality of my restaurants goes up. Five star restaurants now. Uh, it's going there. Done. More money. Let's get this one. Give me a two size green, which clearly has to go there. Uh, You're building a bank over a lake. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to build again this one. Uh -huh. I probably did it in the wrong order again because I could have saved money, I think. Um, but never mind. Uh, so that's a two by two thing. It's four yeah. entertainment buildings. One, two, three. And I'm going to put this um, here for reasons. For reasons. I am going to enact the national park law again. Now, just it must be said that when it is my turn to enact a law, uh, I can choose any of these three laws on my board. The fact that I've chosen this one every single time, you don't have to. You can choose different ones, but because of the strategy that I've fallen into, I think that is the best one for me. So I gain one dollar for every mountain in my neighborhood, and there's lots. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I get fifteen dollars. Done, Arthur. Right, I'm gonna spend a mighty four money, I think. Yeah, mm, special matches really. Yeah, four money. Okay. Which is yet another another bank. Hmm. Which Gosh. increases my shopping. So you've got to five on the shopping. Hmm. Yeah, very nice. I'm gonna buy this. Mm -hmm. Three. Three. And three buy one train station. And another end game scoring card. Well, not the building that I wanted is still there. So I spend four for that. Giving me that. And another end game scoring tile for train stations. Okay. Right. I am going to spend seven. Oh, I need to update my restaurants. Or a drink. Sitting. Yep. I can't now see the one I've got here, this one. And the thing. So I get a new um Ujim flip. You spent eight? I spent seven. Seven. Oh, it was a three, was it? Yeah. Struggling a bit to figure out where I put things, but I think it was the But I guess. Gonna go there. We go four by two, two by two rather. Which there is. It's not a panic or a nine. That increases my number of restaurants, restaurants by four. four to seven. And has an indicator effect. Okay, Rob. I'm gonna buy this three. 
I'll do your quality increase because it's another five points. It's three yeah. times you've done that, yeah? Yeah. And I get an L. Oh, get an L. L. Yeah, you don't need to keep that card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be activated at some point soonish, and you guys are going to lose loads of stuff. We're going to lose loads of stuff. You're going to lose loads of population. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> lose, lose, <laughs> lose in a good way. That's right there. Lose in a good way. I'm going to ship people out of town. And these symbols, they're, they're rich points, aren't they? So, so I need to do this <clears> before you do that. It kind of represents educating people. Is educating who, people who, who, who leave, then... Who leaves the places with their more opportunities yeah. than Seattle. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about this. If you two have both got loads more schooling and universities than me, you're going to benefit more out of that. These three are going to be more beneficial. So I want to trigger these early, even though it's not good for me right now. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I mean, you can be, you can kind of hate draft, can't you? To stop other people getting bigger bonuses. Well, it's not right. Yeah. But it costs you, doesn't it? Well, it's not costing me. Cause, okay. Because, well, no, no, you're right. It's costing me two points mm -hmm. to lose each of you yeah. seven points. Yeah. Okay. So... It is probably the best time to do it. Um, now, how far am I down? I'm 12 people down. Yeah, so that I'm getting nothing for those two. So if I triggered either of these two right now, I'd be getting nothing for it, but I'd be getting the three points, but I'd be de denying you two, I think, from getting more. Whereas that one, I'm happy with that one. So, yeah, I'm going to... Rightly or wrongly, I'm going to build a science centre. You weren't expecting that, were you? No, not after the <laughs> not after what you said. Because I think it's just his way of persuading the us. science centre, when it comes into play, says immediately take another, another turn. Oh, really? Uh, yes, right. Okay. <laughs> and now I'll activate this event. So, time walk. I'm not going to take the entertainment tile, I'm just going to gain three points. And then all players score for their quality track. So I score nothing because I am missing 20 places of entertainment. <laughs> my, my boys. So Rob, you're missing eight. Yeah. So you get 10 money and 10 points. Yeah. I was worried that someone would do that. So, so you persuaded me to activate this at some point. Okay, yeah. So, so would you like to lose a population yes. or gain $3? I think I'll lose the population. So you're losing a population, and then we all lose one population per education building. So I lose two. So I lose a total of four, I think. Plus the one for the cast four. So I lose quite uh, right a bit. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Yep. But it's kind of not really relevant anymore. Well, it is for... Oh, no, it isn't for the other two. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's Arthur done. We've only got three events left. You haven't done your law yet, have you, Arthur? I have not. We are nearing the end of the game, so I'm curious to see what anybody thought of this one. I don't think this one's available yet, so I think, apart from Daniel, who's probably played the game, uh, I'm, I'm guessing anybody else watching this live hasn't played the game, and I am curious to hear your thoughts on it. What are you going to do, Rob? Oh, sorry. It's on the sure go? Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to spend five. So you get one of those. Yeah, which unfortunately doesn't push me up here. Well, it does, but... It does, but that's already been scored. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's messed up everything. Uh, I'm going to build my other landmark, the green building. It's going to go there. Right, so I'm going to build Space Needle. It costs 14. Um, it was there. I'll leave the, the right way up. 
immediately enact one of your laws. Oh, right, okay. Or trigger an event. Um, mm. No, I think I'll enact a law. Um, so, one money for seven points is interesting. Modernization is not really interesting. Business fund. Mm. What do I need? Yeah. I'm going to enact a law. Spend the money. Spend one dollar to gain seven points. Mm -hmm. Well, Rob. I'm going to buy this five. Which gets me another five. Which is another five points. Which and okay. you take the five dollar counters and put them underneath. Okay. Two by two green tiles. Three by two bank. Well, I've kind of messed up a little bit because I should have been buying suburb tiles because I don't really have much else to do with my money. Great, increasing the quality of my pinks and blues is not going to do anything. Oh, there is a tile down there that gets me points. Just noticed it. Buy that. I spend three. Buy that because it's an end game scoring tile for train stations. Six points. Didn't realise. Yeah, effectively. Parkin. I put that there and I've got four more of these. They're still rubbish. Nobody wants to go to my pubs. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and while I was buying that, I am going to buy a suburb tile. Because it's more points. Go on, we're going to fill the gap. There you go. Right. Now I'm going to build a mighty sports stadium. Mm -hmm. Cost 15. Storm Stadium, due to lack of space, is going to... So, water doesn't matter. Correct. It does for me, because I've got a scoring tile for it, but for you, water has already gone. Yeah. Uh, increase everything by one. So, one, bounce. Five points. One. Okay, mm -hmm. Rob? Right. Um... Three events left, and then it is all over. So I'm guaranteed another turn. Yes. Unless I pick one. Unless you pick an event, I pick an event, Arthur picks an event, yeah. then it's all over. But if I don't pick an event, I'm guaranteed. So I'm going to spend four on this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to buy it. I think I'll cover all my entertainment things, so I just need to do that. Yeah. Uh, so that gives me five points and that. Another five points? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to be careful here because I want to place this with my final action, obviously. So, but I'm covering over rich points potentially. I think it's inevitable. So I'm going to cover over at least one rich mm. point. So I'll put that there. Okay. Back to me. Yeah. So I think I think I'm going to activate this shopping event. Oh, that was wrong. I'm going to get three points. Can I put, can I put this here yeah. instead? <laughs> Three points, and then we activate the shopping. I am ten short, and I'm only on level one, so I get nothing. I'm ten short. So you can I'm either have fifteen dollars or fifteen or points. Fifteen points, please. Fifteen points. So ten, fifteen. Rob, twenty-one short. Twenty-one short. Right. Okay. So that's that. Two events left. And that was you, was it? That was me. Yep. So is my. So Arthur. Yes. Uh, right. Um, is it worth buying a building at all? <laughs> it wasn't for me. If I bought that building, it's worth five it points. It's worth five points because it moves up your shopping quality. Mm. That's not insignificant. If I buy the other one, it's probably worth nothing. Although any of those would get me the five points. Is there any point having another university at this stage? Not unless Probably you've got a scoring not. card for it. Probably not. 
and then there's a small benefit. Okay, the alternative is I buy one of the fixed yeah, you can buy one of the fixed buildings. buildings, which is essentially the only one that's different there is the blue one, which we do nothing to me up. Mm. No, actually, it'd be, worth, it'd be worth three, oh, three money. Mm. Yeah, isn't it? Restaurant one might do something for you if you're going to score your restaurants, but you've got your your thirteen short, so your restaurants are currently scoring you one point. If you yeah. if you did that, you it's effectively four points. Yeah, well, I can get five for the. Well, you can get five for that. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. So I've got to place it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That costs four, four dollars. So it increases your shopping quality, which you can't do, but you get five points instead. And you get a three by one shop. Mm. Now, again, lakes are irrelevant, but yep. at this stage, it's not going to help. Okay, it has to go there. Okay, Rob? So I'm going to build the university. So we've both built all of our landmarks. We've, we've all built both of our landmarks. Well, I think we chose them all wisely, having played the game once before. Yes. <laughs> it became worth building them. So what does that one do? So immediately gain two pitch points per university tile. Yep. Which is, I've got five of them. So I get so ten, ten immediate points. Yeah. And you're going to get points at the end of the game I based on game. university tiles next to entertainment, because those students want to go yeah. partying. Yep. Okay. Back to me. Well, it's going to be this one. And I will gain three points. And we will score restaurant quality. So I am one, two, three, four short, which means I get 24 points. So 10, 20, one, two, three, four. It's taking the lead. Good quality restaurants. <laughs> Right. I think I'll get one. <laughs> uh, you're 13 short, mm -hmm. and they're worth 14. Yeah. So you get one point. Rob, nothing. Nothing. I might mess this up. I might mess this up. I hope not. <laughs> so who did that? Did you? I did that. So it's now my It's your go. You could end the game by well, taking I, I, that. I probably have to end the game, so I don't think there's anything else I can do. Oh, you've done your law, and you've only got $1. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing is you get $3. No alternative? No. Nope. And then this this card is different for round three in that you get one point for every mountain and one point for every forest. So sixteen. Yeah, I thought it was sixteen. So I get sixteen points. I get 10. 10 points for so Red. Surprise, you so Six for me. Six money, yeah. No, two money. Six points, right. And then one point, one dollar for every tree, which again for me, I think is 16, because I've not covered all Oh, sorry, I may, I may have taken too much. So what was it again? It's one point per hill. Ah, not per hill and forest. Okay, okay. So I took 10, but it's actually, I should have taken one, two, three, four. So down six. And then the six money. So yeah, I think I've got six tickets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Okay. All events have been triggered. So we do the profit phase for the last round, but we don't do the cleanup. So a profit phase, I get ten money. And I get an extra Get another 15. 49 money. Seven more money. Okay. Three money for entertainment tile. Oh, well, I've taken too much there, eh? Are you cheating again? Yeah. I, I took seven. I should have only taken two. It's per tile, isn't it? Right, starting. Per tile, yeah, yeah, not per symbol. So three money per. Entertainment tile, which I've got 
two and one money per dot. Like more money than I had last game. Okay. Right, Probably we're all done. done. So final scoring. Now we didn't mention this at the start, but every five dollars converts to one point rounded down. Nine. So I'm gonna go up ten and back one. Eleven. Eleven points for white. Eleven. Ten for me. Ten. Okay, next. Every card that is labelled end of game. So I've got Science Center, which is ten points for every landmark in my neighborhood. I have two landmarks, that's twenty points. And this is two points per lake, and I think I've got 15 lakes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that's thirty. So that's thirty points. That's twenty points. I get fifty points. Well, very good. I think we might be on the same score. Fifty points for my landmarks. Do you want to do your landmarks, Arthur? Uh, yes, so, um, landmarks, two points for each level on each of your quality tracks, so five, six, seven, eight times two, sixteen. Sixteen, so ten and six. And then four points per bank, bank. Per next to a shop, so I, I think they're all next to the shop, so extra shop, One, extra shop, two, extra three, shop, four, extra shop, extra shop, six in the shop. One, two, three, six. Twenty-four points? Yeah. So one. So that's 20. Is that right? No, there. Yeah. You were there, one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. And are we doing the property? I was just going to do the landmarks first. Rob, your landmark. Landmarks, okay. So uh, four for each grey tile adjacent to a blue tile. I think all of my grey tiles are adjacent to blue You've tiles. Five of them. And I've got five. So that's 20 points. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the cinema is four per entertainment tile adjacent to a train tile. Blue next to a yellow. And I think they're all adjacent as well. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So 36 points. Yeah. 10, 20, 30. Six. Right. That's points for landmarks. Now we're going to do end game scoring tiles. I have one, two, three, four, five points per train. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's 30. So one, two, three. I think we've beaten our previous score. Yeah. And I get two points per bank, and I've got four, uh, two banks, so that's four points. Arthur? I get two points per bank. 12. 12 points. Any other end game scoring? No, that's it. Rob? Well, I'm Paul, yeah, I think. Uh, so, end of game, I've got one uh, point per bank tile. Yeah. So, this is eight points for those two. Eight points. Put new on. Yeah, so you're there. And this is one point per university tile. And you've got two and of those. I've got two of these, and I've got five in the university tile, so that's another ten. Another ten. And I think that's it. If it was tied, it would be the player with the smallest population that wins. But we have our final scores. Uh, so purple with 150. So each of these is basically yeah, 150 plus 30. So 180. 180. 180. Uh, white next, Rob, with 160. Uh, and then Arthur with 113. Yes. There we go. Well done. Master that scoring business, have I? <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I mean, yeah, you're right. We got we got three landmarks at the start, and we chose two of them. But straight away, I had, I had two train stations on my opening tile. Mm. So I thought, hang on a minute, I've got the green building, which is two points per lake, and I knew from our previous game 
that this was going to score for landscape icons that were uncovered. Mm -hmm. So I went at the start of the game, yeah. the first thing I'm going to do is build some train stations, then I'm going to get lots of free suburbs, and I'm going to plan to never build over an icon. Yeah. Because then I get loads and loads out of that, and that's worth a crazy amount of points. Saying that, I got 30 points for this, you mm. got 36 mm. for one of yours. Yeah. So I thought 30 points for this was insane. But yeah, yeah you did really well at positioning the things yeah. in you, places. I mean, you got big dividends throughout the game, though. I mean, losing population, gaining money. Uh, losing 10 population. Yeah. And then at the end, gaining like 16 points. Yeah. But that, that was my plan, is get lots of suburb yeah. tiles and not build over the icons. And it kind of worked. But it was a, it was the opposite to what I did this afternoon. So this afternoon's game, you two had loads of train stations and I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So I had hardly any suburb tiles. Um, yeah, there's definitely different ways to play it. And because not all the cards come out every time, you've got to pick up the opportunities. It's when really you're hurtful when you're not running off suburb tiles. You just have to cover up the icons. It's... Or spend the money to buy them. Mm, yeah. And I think sometimes spending that four to buy an extra suburb tile is worth it for the item. I mean, it, it was for me because I had that built. If you've got the money, but yeah, yeah, yeah take a point. You've got to pick the victory point engine, mm. engines that synergize with each other. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. We're done. Um, as I mentioned at the start, this is a one to five player game. We've played it three players today. I would be very keen to play this with five. Some games that take five, I wouldn't play with five because they are uh, they're a bit too long. But I think this one flows flows quite quickly. I'd also be interested to see how the two-player version works. They just they just wouldn't be this, so it'd be exactly the same. You'd just have fewer buildings to compete yeah. with. Um, but yeah, we're all done. Big thank you to Wizkids again for sponsoring the video, and also as I mentioned at the start, a big thank you to all of my patron supporters for helping fund the channel. If you like the content that I create and you want to support the channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Now, before you disappear, it's 9.40. We normally play games on a Friday night till 11. Um, we've finished this. This has only taken us about an hour and a half, which is what I thought it would be. Arthur lives quite a way away, so he's going to disappear home. Tell you what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to go to bed straight away. I'm going to do a Patreon only stream. So Patreon supporters of mine, you get a special thing. What I'm going to do is, after you two have disappeared, I'm going to play the solo game of this. Now, I don't know how to play the solo game, but I'm going to do another video tonight where I learn how to play the solo game, and I'm going to play the solo game. So, if you're a patron supporter of mine, keep an eye on the Slack channel. I will be posting a link in about 15 minutes, and I'm going to I'm going to give the solo game a try and, and, and see how it plays. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you all next time. Cheers, guys.